Hello everyone, how are you all doing? It's the Anime Fan 99 here to bring you all episode 2 of my Fate Stay Night Rialta Nua visual novel Let's Play. In the previous episode, we started off the prologue, completed day 1, and we learned all about Tosaka Rin, Magic, Command Seals, and the Holy Grail War. And in this episode, we shall carry on with the prologue and hopefully complete day 2. So, enough of me rambling, let's get on with day 2 of the prologue. The Holy Grail War. It is a great ritual which has been practiced for hundreds of years. If one enters the ritual, one must eliminate the other six, as it is a battle for one's life. It is said that the Holy Grail is in the land of Fuyuki, and that many magi have fought each other here in the past. They had only one purpose, to obtain the noble phantasm called the Holy Grail. But, the origin of the Holy Grail is unknown. It's certain that it never received the blood of God, but its power matches that of one in the legend. Yes. It is said that the Holy Grail can grant any wish. Only one has the right to possess it. The Holy Grail can only grant one wish for one person. But, seven magi are needed to summon the Holy Grail in this land. One miracle, seven collaborators. Well, the point is, it was only a matter of time before a fight broke out over the Holy Grail. It began like an ordinary fight over resources. The seven magi used the power of the Holy Grail equally to each summon a familiar, a servant, to battle the other magi. Only one Magus will obtain the Holy Grail. And so, each of them treated the other six, once allies, now as enemies, and a gruesome fight began. This is the ritual called the Holy Grail War, a competition between Magi for the Holy Grail. The Magi chosen by the Holy Grail are called Masters, and each Master receives a powerful familiar called a Servant by the grace of the Holy Grail. Here so we have all the different classes right here. There are two proofs that one is a Master. Summoning a Servant and making it obey, and obtaining the three command spells that can order the Servant. The first goes without saying. Yesterday, no, a few hours ago to be exact, I summoned Archer to be my servant. That leaves only the second. I must protect to the end this command spell that binds the servant. For a master, this is probably the most important thing of all. The pattern inscribed on my right hand after summoning Archer. This is the command spell. This holy sign, granted by the Holy Grail, is the proof of a master who has summoned a servant. This mark, with concentrated magical energy, is an instantaneous thing, not an eternal one. It is consumed by use, and as the appearance suggests, it has one use for each strike. In other words, only three times. A master who loses all three of their command spells will be unable to control this servant and faces death. So, the command spell must be guarded as closely as one's life. It hurts my head to think that I've used one right at the start, but it wasn't completely meaningless, so I'll call it good. Because it's not unusual for servants to go against their masters. I'm fortunate to have been able to chain him using one command spell. Well, that's the gist of it. The Holy Grail War will start when the seven servants are all summoned. I can't just sleep in. I don't know when the last master will appear, but it should be soon. So much hype right now, guys. So much hype. I'm so tired. Looking out of the window dazed, I notice the sun's already way up. Glancing at the clock, I confirmed to myself that I'll be skipping school today. I sit up in bed and take a deep breath. I'm not tired just because I'm not a morning person. Like Archer said, a master who has just summoned this servant cannot function satisfactorily. I 
<laughs> oh man, I can remember clearly. So can I. <laughs> well, it's not something I want to remember, but even if I don't like it, there's no second chance. I slowly climb out of bed. I fight a bit against the unseasonably warm air and my desire to stay wrapped up in my blanket. I knock out the desire to go back to sleep in the third second of the match and check myself in the mirror. Nothing's obviously wrong, except for the fact that I have only about half the usual magical energy in my body. Everything's up to par. <laughs> for now, I want to check the situation. The servant I summoned is Archer. He, he's a rude guy with no manners to spare for his summoner and master. And on top of that, he doesn't know who he is. Oh, I'm getting a headache already. Servants are powerful familiars on their own, but what makes them the most powerful is the fact that they all have one powerful secret move. The problem is, Archer says he can't remember what it is. That's right, as this is how things ended up, we're both on the same boat. I hope he sorts out his memory soon, but with the way he's acting right now, who knows when that'll be. Honestly, looks like we've got a load of problems ahead. Oh wow, that's a huge change <laughs> from the previous day. Holy crap, it was in pieces <laughs> when Archer was summoned. Now look at it, that's amazing. The living room is just the way it was. I know, right? I only expected it. I only yeah, I only expected him. Sorry, guys, to clear up the rubble. So I moved that he went this far. He must have felt bad about making such a mess of the living room, or he wouldn't have done this. I should call him admirable, or maybe just a nice guy. Well, he's sarcastic. <laughs> Very sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, Archer's got like an attitude problem with Rin, honestly. Like I said, like in the like like I said in the previous episode, I love their interaction. It's amazing. I take it back. <laughs> this shameless attitude. That's exactly what I just said, Tosaka. He doesn't deserve any praise at all. I'm getting a headache. Why is my servant checking my cleanliness? They say servants think only of battles, so maybe this guy's broken somehow. So, so at home in a stranger's house. Archer stands, takes out a new teacup without a moment's confusion, and pours a fine rose-coloured tea. There are all sorts of things I want to say, but I surprisingly don't feel like interrupting him. Every aspect of his motion is refined, and you could even say he is being considerate. I take a seat. He hands me the teacup silently, and I take a sip. Oh, it's good! Of course, it, it's an exotic Chinese tea. It's the best part of my favourite leaf, so I get mad if it tasted bad. In fact, I get mad when someone uses one of my favourites without permission. Tozuka, Tozuka gets mad at everything. <laughs> Honestly, yes. I would, I would get mad, but when it's brewed so wonderfully, I'm too happy to complain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Archer's grin there. Oh my god, I love this character. I love both of these characters. 
その顔では聞くまでもないと思っただけだ I slam the cup down onto the table もったいない熱いうちに味わった方がいいぞ私が気に障るなら消えているわごちそうさま結構よ私は茶坊主が欲しくてマスターになったわけじゃないわあなたもね頼みもしないことをする必要はないわよそうか確かに私も茶坊主になったり後片付けをするために契約したわけではない君がそういうのならばこれからは気をつけようええ私が求めているのは戦力としての使いのよ家事をこなすサーバントなんて聞いたことがないしする必要も特にないわうん特にはないとはどういう意味かな別に好きなようにとって結構よそれよりあなた自分の正体を思い出せたアーチャーシェイクスハード。Just as I thought, it's bad. If we can't remember it after one night, it's not going to come back easily. Even if we test various things today, this is still. わかった。あなたの記憶に関してはおいおい対策を考えとく。じゃあ、出かける支度をして、アーチャー。召喚されたばかりで買ってもわからないでしょ街を案内してあげるから出かける支度いやそんな必要はないだろう出るのならばすぐに出られるがあのねそんな格好で出歩くつもりどう見ても普通じゃないし他のマスターが見たら一発でサーバントってわかるじゃない<laughs> yeah, that's pretty risky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty risky. 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 That's p r e t t 召喚されたって英霊は英霊だものね霊体に肉体を与えるのはマスターの魔力なんだから私が魔力提供をカットすれば自然我々も霊体に戻るそうなったサーバントは守護霊のようなものだレイラインでつながっているマスター以外には観測されないもっとも会話程度はできるから偵察ならばしようないが便利それじゃあ本当に他のマスターを探し出すなんて難しいんだああだが魔術師は魔術師を知覚できるだろうそれと同じでサーバントもサーバントを感知できる優れた魔術を知るサーバントならば遠く離れたサーバントの位置さえ把握するだろう Just as Archer says A master is usually a great magus. A magus with strong magical energy is sensitive to other magical energy. But as far as I know, no one in this town has magical energy that strong. Well, I guess not. Archer's magical energy isn't that strong. I expect only the servant caster would have enough magical energy to locate enemies from a distance. She is. <laughs> yes, something very important. Think, Tosaka, think. Equivalent exchange? What is this? F Full Metal Alchemist? 
<laughs> no. Fundamentally, the reward for the sermon is to participate in the Holy Grail War. There shouldn't be any more exchanges necessary. <laughs> oh, God. Archer says so in surprise. Listening to his sarcastic comment, I realise something. Come to think of it, he hasn't addressed me by name yet. Oh, Catching on now, Tosuka? Archer asks sulkily. <laughs> Damn it, he is a good person. Yes, there's no mistake. After all, there's no meaning to exchanging names. Servant and master have a relationship forced upon them by the command spell. For a contract with a normal familiar, the exchange of names has a great deal of meaning, but no such bond is needed between the master and the servant. But still, Archer calls it important. It's a proof of trust that we shall be fighting alongside each other, even without the command spell. I answer bluntly, unable to be true to my feelings. Well, actually, it would probably it would probably be easier for me to be addressed in a reserved manner like you or Master, and you'll probably call me that. But that said, Archer mutters my name to himself. <laughs> oh, that's so like Archer, just going straight for the for the first name. <laughs> oh god, he he says something outrageous. I love it when Tosuka, Tosuka gets flustered, it's so funny. <laughs> I turn away and start walking. I'm vexed. I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> Did Archer say that just to make me feel this way? <laughs> he would, I gotta be honest. <laughs> He's very sarcastic. Yes, that must be it. So, my face getting hot and my heart pounding, they're all part of his plan. And it's probably because you're a Sundara, Rin. <laughs> Be careful, Rin. You're going to have to work with this crooked guy from now on. <laughs> oh. I know I said this a million times, but I love their interactions. It's amazing. I go out with Archer. The city we live in, Fuyuki City, can be basically divided into two towns. Alright, so this is going to be a tour now, guys, of all of Fuyuki, informing readers about how the area works and stuff like that. How it's all connected. It's pretty cool. Here, the place with old houses and traditional buildings is Miyama City. On the other side of the, there, on the other side of the river is Shinto, where modern development is happening. My house is in the older section, Miyama City. Miyama City is broadly separated into two sections as well. This is one of the sections, the western style houses, where immigrants from foreign countries live. And on the other side is the area of old Japanese styled houses with a mountain behind it. Both sections are on top of hills, so you could say both are suburbs. The houses in between these two sections are relatively ordinary. As a demonstration, they're this ordinary. This is the crossroads of Miyama City and the hill leading up to the western style houses like mine. On the opposite side, a hill leads up to the Japanese styled houses. A bridge leads to the neighbouring town of Shinto, and the other way leads to the school, shopping district, and even Ryudo Temple up on the mountain. And this is the large bridge connecting Shinto and Miyama City. A few years ago, a big station was built over that side, and it has grown rapidly since then. Even though Miyama City and Shinto are in the same city, you can think of them as totally different places.
The city's name, Fuyuki, or Winter Tree, supposedly comes from the fact that winters are long here. Thinking about it, this place certainly has a long winter. In contrast though, it's quite warm here, and February here is about as warm as December everywhere else. I bet a few hot springs would turn up if you went digging around. Then again, this half-hearted cold would make the city a poor hot springs resort. Fuyuki City has a friendly winter and a strange climate that enters spring in April with no changes. Shinto is all like this. The rapidly developing town started to build tall buildings as if rushed by something, and as a result, it looks very artificial. Though, that's only in the last 10 years. From what I hear, the big fire here 10 years ago pretty much burned down the whole residential district. These buildings were constructed on the land no one lived on anymore. And... This is the center of it. I ask Archer, who was standing next to me. I can't see him, of course. I look around the park. A park this big and organized should be a playground for kids, even on weekdays. But there are only a few people here and a desolate feeling runs through the place. <clears throat> Archer says nothing, but even though I can't see him, I can tell that he is feeling something special. なるほど。Ooh, reality marble. Now that's an interesting term. Archer brings up an unusual term in a motionless voice. Reality marble. One of the magics considered the pinnacle of magi, said to be infinitely close to sorcery. For hundreds of years, a boundary field has been the defensive field that protects Amargus. But simply, it's a vicious version of a security system on a house. A boundary field is something applied to an existing area or building to protect oneself from outside enemies. But it is merely a transformation applied to what already exists. But a reality marble is different. A reality marble is an image that erodes reality. The imagined world of Amagus, a boundary field that paints over reality by letting Amagus' heart take form, that is what we call a reality marble. In other words, it's a large range magic that distorts, no, remakes the world as the Magus wishes. Some pretty powerful magic right there, by the sounds of it. Isn't that right? I ask with my expression. And then I sense him sighing heavily next to me. Rim. 
アーチャーだからといって弓しか使えないと思うのは勝手だが私以外のサーバントにそんな楽観は持たないでくれああ Come to think of it, he's right. わかったわよ。今のは警察の発言だったわ。次からは気をつけるから、これでいいでしょ。リン、ズバリ言おう。君は優秀だが、それゆえに他人を過小評価する欠点がある。成人するまでには強制したまえ。ああ。何気に失礼なこと言うわね、あんた。Well, that's what Archer does best. Re reform? That's like training bad habits out of a horse! Oh! Oh my god. Really, Archer? Ooh. My right arm suddenly hurts. The command spell engraved on my right hand is hurting. A small warning, as if to get my attention. I extend my consciousness to the surroundings. I roll out the threads of my consciousness and search through the park. I don't know who it is, but if Archer can't sense it, it has to be a master. There aren't seven of us yet, but if we wanted to, we could start the fight at any time. It seems the one watching us wants to battle, but. Archer takes a deep breath and goes quiet as if he's shocked. I ask, remembering our previous conversation. But Archer just says, that's impossible. He says, try to hold back his laughter. Well, it's not like. But well, it's not like I like his response, but we decide to continue walking around town. We we tour the important places, really dragging our observer around, have dinner along the way, and bring things to a conclusion. We've been walking a lot, and it's now seven. At this time of the night, our destination should give us the best view. Ooh. Wow, look at that view. A strong wind. The tallest building in Shinto. The view from the rooftop of this building is a fitting end for this day. <laughs> well, Archer does have a point there. <laughs> 
ここからわかるのは町の前景だけじゃない実際にその場に行かないと町の作りはわからないわ Yet again, so does Rin, though. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh. Ooh. That's really cool. <laughs> I know that's crazy. That's not just good. His eyesight can match the telescopes you find on these rooftops. Oh. If I'm honest, I'm more of a fan of the line in the anime. The archer class really is made up of archers. <laughs> Oh, Archer, you're also cynical, aren't you? <laughs> it seems Archer is taking a liking to the view as he falls silent. He's probably working out the town's layout. I can't interrupt while he's surveying the battlefield. I leave Archer's side and move to the edge of the building. All I can see with my eyesight is the lights below this building. Like the headlights of the cars in the street and the people going home after work. I can't tell what kinds of cars or what kinds of people they are. I can see them, but still not see them. Just like noticing someone is watching me before, but not being able to see the watcher. I strain my eyes and stare below me. There are seven masters in all. I still don't know who the masters are, nor which servants they command. Right now, I assume all the masters are walking around town, collecting information on other masters. Eh? Huh? Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on me. There's no reaction from my command spell. I just feel someone's eyes on me. I look down. There are many people walking around on the road. Among them is a person. One person is looking up at me as if looking up at the moon. I can't tell for sure who it is. I can't tell for sure, but I still know who it is. It's surprising. What's he doing at this kind of a time? Archer calls out to me as if sensing my excitement. I answer, unable to hide my irritation and leave the place where I was standing. There's no way he could have seen me from the ground. He must have been looking up at the building by coincidence. So it doesn't mean I was noticed. But still, I'm angry that I let him see me acting as a Magus. Interesting scene right there. By the time we get back to Miyama City, it's already past 9 o'clock. Unlike Shinto, Miyama City is an old residential district. No one walks around after 9 and the town grows as quiet as midnight. Oh, sorry guys, I actually skipped the text there. Of the dialogue. We climb the road up to the gentle hill, or up the gentle hill rather, and there's someone walking in front of us. This is bad. I don't want to see her right now. As I speak, I look at the figure ahead of us on the road. 
There's the well-known first-year student. Ooh, and a foreigner I don't know. I know who that is. Of course, I'm not going to spoil. <laughs> they are talking about something. No. It seems the foreigner is talking to Sakura against her wishes. I say that much, then scold myself for being too soft with that girl is involved. Still, I know she's not the kind of girl to get in to get into trouble with a guy. The blonde guy goes down the road we came up. Hmm, I wonder what that was all about. Hmm. Fatigue hits me hard once I walk into my room. That annoying priest. He'll already be getting ready to call in the substitute Magus. I don't really care about that, but he is my guardian, so I should at least do the right thing. I dial the number, and soon the fake priest picks up. A brief silence. Kirei's silence has enough pressure to stress you out even over the phone. <laughs> ああ、それってお父さんの遺言のことそれならもう解読して手に入れたからいいわ。それじゃ、気が向いたらお邪魔するからよろしく。待て、ビン。マスターになったのなら。Angie just slams the phone down. <laughs> I hang up, not hearing him out. Listening to Kirei's lecture while I'm tired won't help me recover my magical energy. All that's left is to sleep. When I wake up next, it should be a completely different morning. Ten years ago, the Holy Grail War, in which my father competed as a master and was defeated. Now, I'm entering that same battle. Okay guys, so that concludes day two of the prologue and that means that this is the end of this video of episode two. So I wish to thank you all so much for watching. I know this video was shorter, but I still want to keep like a day per episode just so I can keep this let's play structured, if you know what I mean. So yeah. That's it. So, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please consider, consider dropping your likes. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're new to my brand new channel, The Anime Fan 99, please consider subscribing because I would greatly appreciate that as well. And that's all I've got to say. So, as I always say, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you all have a, that you all have a fantastic day and take care.